Sergei Pavlovich is a scary, scary man, and he is looking like a berserker right now. He's looking like a dude who is taking the UFC by storm, a guy who we continuously keep doubting. Oh, he can't be that good, and he's just demolishing everybody in his path. You look at his last three victories, you have three straight victories against, uh, let's see, yeah, we got three straight victories, Taito Avasa, Derek Lewis, Shamil Abdurakimov. Not just victories, but we have knockout victories, right? You want to go back a little bit further, Maurice Green, knocked him out. You want to go back to Marcelo Golm, knocked him out. Alistair Overeem is the man's last loss, and he did get finished by the Uberim, right? But at the end of the day, man, impressive stuff for Sergey Pavlovich. Now, we have to be honest when we're talking about the last two fights, Taito Avasa and Derek Lewis, right? Fun fighters, momentum fighters built up fighters but are those the true litmus test i think that curtis blades is the real litmus test in the heavyweight division but you tell me Derek lewis plotting heavyweight taito avasa plotting heavyweight they get the fights done but is this the first real legitimate oh you're fighting a true full form to mix martial artist at the highest level for sergey pavlovich now, full form, Derek, is where I have a little bit of pushback because I feel that sometimes Sergey Pavlovich can outstrike Curtis Blades. He gets a little mm -hmm. not, not sharp on his feet, on his head movement, on his defense. Curtis Blades can get caught, and that's what worries me about this one. But as far as a, as a litmus test going into the heavyweight waters, mm -hmm. this is it for him, man, especially for somebody who does pose that multiple threat. Can strike. Like I said, defense, it is what it is. Um but can strike has power and more so than that he can push you up against the fence and control the fight whether it's on the cage or on the ground Derek, i mean uh curtis blades does provide a real real heavy threat right here but like i was saying before Derek, how worried are you that sergey pavlovich all he needs is one because if you go back to the fights you were talking about his last five have all been finished in round one mm -hmm. and the only fight he lost was still a round one loss but this dude comes out hot heavy swing and heavy leather man it's a it's a worrisome for me because the defense of Curtis Blades, do you see the same holes I do, or do you think it's something else? Well, I can say confidently, the last four fighters that Sergey Pavlovich has fought, he has not. He's been able to go full fledged offensive because you haven't had to worry about a takedown coming back his way. And that's the thing with Curtis Blades is that you're going to stall some of that offensive momentum for Sergey Pavlovich with a threat of the takedown because Curtis Blades is not a lay in prey. Curtis, like razor blades, that comes from the elbows he's dropping on your head after he takes you down, right? So it's literally, I mean, okay, let's take a look. Normally we don't jump into the props this quickly, but minus 105 TKO prop for Curtis Blades. <laughs> You'd have to imagine the odds makers are saying we haven't really seen Pavlovich tested in the UFC with the grapplers. Curtis Blades has done it time in and time out, man. He has taken down everybody. And now his recent test has been, can I win fights without taking people down? And yeah, you won two in a row. The last one doesn't really count. The Tom Aspinall one, not really, because they didn't. I mean, to me, this is the, the same thing as... Uh, Arnold Allen's victory over Calvin Cater. You didn't really fight. You know what I mean? You got around. There's a freak injury. You got to win technically. You got a TKO on your record. But at the end of the day, I think that Curtis Blades has shown he is arguably in the entire heavyweight division, the top five right now. He's the most complete fighter there besides John Jones, obviously, right? So when it comes down to it, I think the question that you're asking right now is, well, is his stand-up good enough to survive a Sergei Pavlovich blitz, that, that classic blitz that he has where he just opens up? And I don't know, man. I don't know because what happens is you, you see it time in and time out, man. You see these grapplers who they're, – they're decent strikers, right? But, you know, their tendency, just like Masvidal did to Ben Askren, is to dive down, is to shoot at the hips. Derek Lewis already took advantage for Curtis Blades. Why would Sergei Pavlovich not have the same game plan of – Things up the middle. You always talk about it. Uppercuts, knees. Give them something to think about so they don't shoot. Do you think Sergey Pavlovich, because if he shows that, do you think Sergey Pavlovich, I mean, do you think he's just this new hybrid heavyweight that nobody's going to be able to touch or what? Man, if he's able to stuff a takedown, put uh, razor blades down, face in the mat, uh, scoot back a little and start landing some shots, mm -hmm. I'll, I'll eat all the words right here, man, because that would be incredible. I, I would love to see it, but I don't know if uh, the... At when Sergey Pavlovich blitzes, I don't know if he has the retracting status or the, the escape status yeah. to be able to get out of there, you know? Because once that blitz is going, that dude is full force. It's so easy for uh, Curtis to get to those hips and actually get a takedown. That's what worries me with that mm -hmm. fight. But I'm, yeah, I don't know, man. It's, I mean, that's why I'm actually very excited for this fight because I do feel like 
the grittiest, the hardest working, the the most determined fighter is right now Curtis Blades at this time. Mm-hmm. He's going to be a problem to deal with if he can escape that blitz. Looking at a macro perspective, one thing that's really interesting to me is that if you look at the last 10 fights of these fighters, you know, you know the last five is the most popular, last 10 fights between both of these fighters, they've both gone five rounds once. So you can't sit here and say Pavlovich can't go multiple rounds if he needs to. Granted, um, eight of the other fights that he had were all finished in the first round. You know what I mean? He's just smashing people, knocking them all out in the first round. He went five rounds once, and then he did have a three-round um, decision victory, right? So he, he won both of those fights. That's impressive, bro. If you look at Curtis Blades, um, he got a three-rounders. He's got one five-rounder against uh, Alexander Volkov when he wasn't able to finish him. The only difference is all of these have basically been in the UFC for Curtis Blade. So you've been facing the high-level competition. That's the big narrative to this story to me. If Curtis Blades can drown him, if he could take him into round two and round three where that quickness for the heavyweight, Sergey Pavlovich, turns into the just regular heavyweight, Curtis Blades has seen it time in and time out. I don't see why he can't get the job done. I guess the big question to you is, I mean, if we're taking a look at the over and under right here, the over and under is one and a half rounds, minus 145 for the under. Who does that favor more, Pavlovich or Blades? Pavlovich, to be honest, man, because that blitz is coming. I'm. I was actually going to ask you, Derek. Over under one round. Do you think Curtis Blades shoots? Like, what, like I, because me personally, I think he's going to shoot in the under. I think he's going to shoot in that round two, that round three. Try to stand up. Try to keep him thinking. Like, oh, I guess this guy isn't going to wrestle. Let's just stand mm-hmm. and bang. Hell yeah! Next thing you know, you're on your back on the mat. That's what I'm expecting right here. Do you see it the same? I actually see it exactly the same. I see do not do not uh, take the ace out of your sleeve and show it right away, right? Stand, trade with him, make him tentative, make him hesitant, and then once he finally commits, shoot for the hips and then get him down, smash elbows, and get the job done. On the opposite hand, we have seen Sergey Pavlovich literally just be too overwhelming for a lot of these heavyweights. I just don't think Curtis Blades falls into the same category as Derek Lewis and as uh, Taito Vasa. And that's arguably, those are the real big wins. Shamil Abdurakimov, I've been saying Ryden's on the wall for a little bit, but I'm, I'm just saying, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so like, listen, no disrespect. These guys are all heavyweights. They'll all kick our ass. Curtis Blades is the real deal. Give me Curtis Blades. I want AJ. I want the TKO. This is not going the distance. These are heavyweights. These are big boys. These are bad boys right here. Give me the minus 105 TKO. Do I see a lot of value on that? No. I'm going to advise everybody watching this. If you're rocking with my pick, take the money line. Curtis Blades minus 175 all day long. How do you see it? Derek, I don't really like to do this the exact same, man, where we're choosing the same people in the exact mm-hmm. same way. I don't see value there, but I do see the fight ending like that. Curtis Brazer Blades, TKO. I'm actually going to take the over in that round two. I think it's going to come late round two. So we're going to see some ground and pound, and we're finally going to see Curtis Blades get back to where he needs to be challenging for the title belt. Soon enough. We'll see, though. A big statement win here for Curtis Blades and Shores. Title's next. That's it. It's either going to be Jones or Miocic, whoever wins wins that fight. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. But all right, brother. That's going to be a, a, a big-time heavyweight main event right there.